We are against the pre-tribulation rapture. We are against the thought that the rapture happens before the tribulation. You say, why are you against that? Well, you're there in uh, 2 Thessalonians. Uh, look at chapter 2 and look at verse number 1. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 1. And again, I don't want to spend a lot of time on this. You can watch an entire documentary on it if you haven't learned about this. We can give it to you, all right? Uh, but 2 Thessalonians chapter uh, 2 and verse 1 says this, Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering together unto him. Now that's referring to the rapture. We are gathered together when the Lord Jesus Christ comes. Look at verse 2. That ye be not soon shaken in mind, or be troubled, neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letter as from us, as that that day of Christ is at hand. He said, look, I don't want you to be uh, shaken in mind or be troubled thinking that the day of Christ is at hand. The day of Christ is referring to the rapture, the day that we're gathered together. And when it says at hand there, that means that it can happen at any moment. Here's what he's saying. He's saying the rapture is not imminent. And the pre-tribulation rapture teaches today that it can happen at any moment. I mean, it could happen before the service ends tonight. You know, it could happen right now. But the Bible says here, look, that day, the day of Christ, is not at hand. Verse 3, let no man deceive you by any means, for that day, what day? The day of the rapture shall not come, except there come a falling away first, and the man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. See, the Bible says that that day won't come until first there's a falling away, and secondly, the man of sin needs to be revealed, the Antichrist, the son of perdition. Now go to 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, and look at verse number 15. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 and verse 15. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord, shall not prevent them which are asleep. And I want you to notice how the Bible always calls the rapture the coming of the Lord. Because the pre-tribulation rapture people separate those two. They say the rapture is different from the coming of the Lord. Well, you must not be reading the Apostle Paul because the Apostle Paul seems to be convinced that the coming of the Lord is the rapture. Notice what he says. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. Look at verse 16. Asleep, they're talking to those that are dead. Verse 16. For the Lord Lord himself. Now I want you to notice the characteristics of the rapture. Look, 1 Thessalonians chapter number 4 and verse 16, no one on planet earth that is a Christian argues the fact that this is about the rapture. This passage is about the rapture. Notice verse 16. He says, For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel. So I want you to notice, let's just look at some characteristics of the rapture. Number one, the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout and with the voice of the archangel and with the trump. So I want you to notice one characteristic of the rapture is that the Lord descends which is why it's called the coming of the Lord, right? The second characteristic is that there is a trump of God that we're going to hear. Notice, and the dead in Christ shall rise first, then we which are alive and remain shall be, here's the third characteristic, caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. So characteristic number one, the Lord himself shall descend from heaven. Characteristic number two, the trump of God shall sound. Characteristic number three, we shall be, we that are, are remain shall be caught up together with him in the clouds. Now, with that said, go to Matthew 24. Matthew chapter 24, first book in the New Testament, Matthew chapter 24. In Matthew chapter 24, in verse number 29, we see the rapture. Now, today... Old IFBers will tell you, Matthew 24 is not about the rapture. Okay, but look, we, we, and, and you ask them, well, how do you know that? And they'll say, well, because this dispensational book that I read tells me that. But we have to allow the Bible to define itself, and we have to allow the Bible to teach us what is going on. So we saw the characteristics of the rapture. The Lord himself shall descend. The trump of God shall sound. We will be gathered together with him in the clouds. Let's see if we can find those same characteristics in Matthew 24. Look at verse 29. Immediately after the tribulation. You say, why do you believe that this happens after the tribulation? Because that's what the Bible says. 
Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall, uh, shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. Verse 30, And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall, notice, number one, see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great, great glory. Isn't that what First Thessalonians said? That the Lord shall descend? It calls it the coming of the Lord. Notice verse 31. And he shall send his angel with a great sound of a trumpet. Isn't that what 1 Thessalonians said about the trump of God? And they shall gather together his elect from the four winds, from one of the heaven to the other. Isn't that what we read about the rapture, that they'll be caught up together and gathered together in the clouds? Look, Matthew 24, verses 30 and 31 are without a doubt talking about the rapture, and according to verse 29, it happens immediately after the tribulation of those days. So we don't believe in the pre-trib rapture. You say, why? Because look, as Baptists, we allow the Bible to, look, when the Bible is your boss, you're a Baptist. Amen. Amen. So you say, well, my whole life I was raised that the pre-tribulation rapture was true. Yeah, but you know what? When the Bible tells you it's wrong, you just follow the Bible. That's what a Baptist would do. Amen. That's what a Baptist does. He looks at the Word of God and says, well, we were wrong about that. So now we're against the pre-trib rapture. We're post-trib rapture. Look at verse 40, Matthew 24, verse 40. It says, Then shall two, in, uh, two be in the field. The one shall be taken and the other left. Two women shall be grinding at the mill. The one shall be taken and the other left. Watch therefore, for ye know not what hour your Lord does come. My whole life growing up, those verses were used to talk about the rapture, to prove the rapture. Now we tell them, well, look, if you believe that Matthew 24, verses 40, 41, 42 are about the rapture, it's the same event, it's the same chapter, it's the same context in verse 29 when it says immediately after tribulation in those days. Now they're shying away and not using those verses anymore. But look, these verses are about the rapture. So you said, what distinguishes the new IP movement? One thing is that we are against the pre-tribulation rapture. 